Okay, in this tutorial we'll be fitting a uh, 4 bolt flange to the 300 TDI rear axle so it will accept a uh, traditional prop shaft with a hardy spicer joint. Some of us will be wanting to dispense with the uh, cush drive coupling and retrofit a prop shaft. However, if you have something like a suspension lift then you possibly be considering a wide angle prop shaft and these are available from Paddock for Defenders and Discoveries. First of all we're going to have to remove this three point fixing and get it out of the way. And uh, in the kit here, STC4858, we have a nut for the pinion, a seal which is the correct type and it's already lubricated and we have a flange which uh, is the correct type and it's machined to fit the uh, Land Rover prop shafts and it fits on the splines lovely. First of all we're going to have to remove the flange centralizer or spigot as we call it and I'll have a socket here which is large enough to allow the whole thing to be pulled through the center. Alright so three quarter drive and it's long enough to allow me to pull this almost all the way out of the flange. You'll also need an M8 bolt, this is M8 by 1.25 with a nut and some washers. In the spigot itself there is a thread and uh, this allows you to screw this in. There is a professional tool which will cost you 140 to 170 pounds. Now this is the cheapest way of doing it and it's effective. And I'll show you this. Alright, so basically you need to fit this onto the flange so it's secure. Okay, and the washers are centralised. The nut is the part that will be pulling. Now, little trick here is to lubricate and put some oil between the washers and drip onto the thread. And I'm using a uh, pair of Stilsons, if you like, to hold the flange. It's not that tight, so it's all right. And it's a matter of winding the nut. Now this is a very, very effective puller. So as we pull, it's pulling central to the uh, spigot. Land Rover actually thread lock these in, so you have to break the seal to be able to pull it. And you get so far on this, the hardest part is the first centimetre and then after that it's, it is slightly tapered so it will pull out a lot easier. Take it easy when you're winding the thread out but you'll get to the point where it's actually loose and you can wiggle it and that will come out and there you go you've got your um, spigot out. Flange itself held on by a, a nut on the pinion and again I'm using my uh, Stilsons here. 24mm socket and a short breaker bar and that's come undone. I know you'll probably be doing on this on a vehicle and you'll be laying on your back however be careful with this. Okay so the nuts out. You shouldn't have much of a problem taking this out and just remember there's actually a washer in there which uh, you don't want to be losing or dropping on the floor. The seals they're actually uh, quite hard to remove the the original Land Rover ones and I've actually broken this with a uh, special chisel and uh, once I've cracked it I can then get something like a lever bar or a big screwdriver in and pull it out. Now you can see the axle stands are moving here because it's actually quite light. Doing this on the vehicle you'd have the uh, wheels on the floor with the uh, the wheels actually chopped. Okay so that's, that's out. Alright. Inside you'll probably find that there's the uh, garter for the seal and it'll be worth your while checking for debris and making sure it's clean before you refit a new seal. You can see the debris here. Okay, the uh, new seal, which fits on the uh, flange very well. There's a quick way to do this. You can either use a socket or you can uh, use the flange itself and just tap it home. Now, I'm using a socket on here so it evens the pressure out as I'm banging at home. Notice how the uh, axle stands are moving about. I'm wearing steel toe caps here just in case it drops off. Now, the seal is home. It's also square in the housing, which is very important so the seal doesn't fail. The seal itself that's supplied has a lip on it, and uh, this is a uh, extra dirt shield. If you're going to use a socket to drive the uh, seal home, you want to make sure that it actually fits within the side of the socket so it doesn't get damaged, whereas this socket, it won't let it do it. 
I'd also like to add that the seal I've just fitted is a genuine Land Rover part and the seal which came with the kit is exactly the same with exactly the same numbers on it. The last thing I'd like to show you is the uh, how to hold the flange. Now the Stilsons will be no good for this because the flange is narrow. However with the uh, two M8 bolts you could use uh, slightly larger but these work quite fine and I'm locking these to the flange and then I'm going to use these with a the bar to be able to hold the flange in place while I do the nut up to a certain torque. Okay so uh, once you've got your socket in place and the uh, retainers fit a bar which goes to the floor in this manner to uh, be able to retain it while I turn the flange and uh, that's quite easy so I can then torque this up. The nominal torque settings depend on which diff you have of course and on the screen here is the data for the one that I'm actually using however check with your technical manual if there is any differences. Now these um, bearings are actually preloaded and it's the torque setting on the pinion nut that is uh, needs to be correct. I would take the half shafts out of the uh, diff first and then feel it. It should be about 3 newton meters resistance. Uh, this is actually vital otherwise you'll end up wrecking the bearings if it's too tight. Okay so there you go fairly simple. If you're actually using a, a normal prop shaft and you've uh, put a lift kit on your Land Rover then you might well be interested in this spacer which helps the uh, prop shaft so it doesn't pop out at the slider available from paddock and uh, everything's fine so there you go have fun don't forget to fit your half shafts back in